This week is a special week. I'm joined by Tony from Hack the Movies, and we're gonna be coming up with predictions for popular movies coming out. Today's topic, Indiana Jones 5 and the Dial of Destiny. Tony, on a scale from one to 10, one being Morbius and 10 being Morbius again, how excited are you for Indiana Jones 5? Negative 10 million, Adam. I am negative 10 million excited for what is going to be one of the worst movies I'll ever see. That That is how excited I am. Expand on that. Uh, I don't want to see another elderly, sad Indiana Jones. I don't want to see an old man's face poorly green screened or composited onto a stuntman for most of the movie or digitally de-aged. Uh, I think boomers need to stop reliving their youth and just let other action heroes arise. You didn't like Harrison Ford reprising his role as Han Solo. Is that what you're telling me? If he had just been a pilot and like maybe just shot a few people, that'd be fine. But they had to show him awkwardly running and punching people. And then when he was aiming without looking, I'm like, no, no, Grandpa, you're not that cool, Grandpa. Well, Tony, uh, unlike you, I am a mid level of excitement for this film. I'm not negative at all. I'm actually kind of optimistic because there was an Indiana Jones 4. It does exist in the real world. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And uh, I'd like to get that taste out of my mouth. I would consider this to hopefully be like Rocky 6, Rocky Balboa, where... We have Rocky Five. It's dumb. It's it's cheesy. It kind of ruined a lot of things for people. Indiana Jones Five is going to take it back. It's going to bring us back. <sighs> that is more optimistic than me. I don't know. Uh, I think it does have a good director. And that's where I was going to go. James Mangold. He did uh, Ford v Ferrari. He did Logan. And now he's going to win our hearts again with Indy Five. Yes, and I understand where you're coming from. He has a very good track record. Uh, I don't think he's made a bad movie yet, right? I even like that movie he did with Tom Cruise. The I think he did Night and Day with Tom Cruise. Oh, he did uh, that with Cameron Diaz? I'm pretty sure that was him. He's got a great track record, and I would have loved to have seen what he could have done with an Indiana Jones who wasn't 10,000 years old. <laughs> so I think someone said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was like an Indiana Jones where he fought a mummy? And then he misheard it and he said, oh, an, uh, Indiana Jones, where Indiana Jones is a mummy? I'll get Harrison Ford on the phone right now. I don't even need to do any makeup. Uh, so, yeah, I see where, where you're coming from. But uh, I just, I think he's the right director. I just think he's being handed the wrong story with the wrong lead. There's been a lot of noise online, Tony. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. Oh. There, there's a lot of noise. <laughs> I reacted! I reacted! But people, men, grown adults, are very concerned that Indy's going to be replaced by a young, spry, hot female. Well, first off, um, she's a four at best. Second, uh, the director has said that they're not trying to replace him, but they could be lying. Um, I don't know if you remember that that Doom movie that came out, direct video Doom Annihilation. The sequel to the hit film Doom with The Rock? It, it, well, it wasn't a sequel. It was just another Doom movie. Oh, okay. uh, a smaller movie. But that director said, don't worry, because there was a lead girl in it. Like, a, and she did like a whole picture where she's like, who needs a Doom guy? And she was the star of the movie. And then the director said, don't worry, the Doom Slayer will be in the movie. And that director did what is known as lying. <laughs> so James Mangold could be doing that where he said, don't worry, no one will replace Indiana Jones. He could be lying. I don't know if you know this. People in Hollywood who uh, make up stories for a living and pretend to be other people, they're known for lying in real life also. It's brilliant. Uh, I'm not sure if she's going to be his daughter because they say in the trailer that she's his goddaughter. Okay. Now have, now have, I'm sure he's, she's like a niece or something. But now having said that, in Crystal Skull, Mutt was just some dude and then it was revealed to be his son, which really, really annoyed me. I was more annoyed by him swinging on vines, but yeah, we'll move on from that. My theory for this film, since it takes place during the the height of the what the Cold War, the um, yes, yes, the 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 launch of uh, whatever fucking spaceships are going up into space. Indiana Jones is going to meet up with this young woman. I'm gonna say, you know what, Tony? I'm gonna say this movie starts with the young woman. It's not gonna start with Indy. She's going to be. 
involved in some sort of a heist situation. She's going to get out of there unscathed. Maybe it's a callback to the original Indiana Jones where we see her in a temple and she replaces something as a booby trap is sprung loose and right before she's gonna die, Indiana Jones comes out and saves her, but not intentionally. He was also going for the same artifact and that's how they meet up on their misadventures. Holy shit, I just wrote this movie! Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's probably going to start with her doing some action stuff and then she'll be like, ah, oh, I know I got to call my old uncle Henry. They're going to, she's going to use his real name. She's going to refuse to call him Indy. Sure. Like, I got to call my old Henry Jr. And ask him his, <laughs> pick his brain. And he's going to be like, someone's going to try and kill her. And he's going to be like, Hey, goddaughter. You're oh, in yeah. over your head. S someone's definitely after her because she has the plans, like secret plans for some spaceship or something like that. The Nazis <laughs> are like working that. on. Yeah. But because, um, Mutt has presumably died, uh, and will never be mentioned again. And Mary and his wife has also died and will never be mentioned again. He's like, this is the only family I have left. My goddaughter, I guess. Um, I think it's gonna be Marcus Brody's daughter or granddaughter. And Indy's got to be like, I got to take care of her. And he's going to he's gonna assist her in getting the Dial of Destiny, which will probably have something to do with time travel. The Dial of Destiny. Yeah, that's something that the Nazis are working on because they're back, right? I don't know if you know this, Adam, but for the last five or six years, some people say they never left. <laughs> <laughs> they're like Pokemon. You got to catch them all. You got to catch them all. <laughs> Tony, when you were talking about our poor mutt possibly dying unceremoniously off camera, I picture that mm. I picture uh, Harrison Ford going to the gravestone and there's just vines like wrapped around it from his time with the monkeys. And he looks mm. over and there's like a procession of monkeys just like looking on with tears <laughs> coming down. Did he bury him in the jungle? Like <laughs> There's like an old wise ape there and he just tips the hat to Indy. He's got Indy's hat on and he just like walks away with the cane. <laughs> and they're playing the Indiana Jones theme song like super sad in the background. <laughs> exactly. It's beautiful. Um, but yes, what do you think the Dial of Destiny is? I'm, I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be a time travel thing. Yeah, it's going to be time travel. It's, there's no question because we have to keep going larger than life. We had aliens in the last movie. There was a dude getting his heart ripped out of his chest, Mortal Kombat style in the second movie. People's faces were melting off in one of them. So yeah, we got to go, in, we gotta go back, back to the past. And I think they yes. already showed, didn't they already show some de-aging stuff on Harrison Ford? They showed it in the trailer, and I remember some of the first set photos they showed was Harrison Ford with dots all over his face. And I said, oh, good. Young Indiana Jones is going to walk like a geriatric dinosaur. I can't wait to see young Indiana Jones walk like he had a hip replacement. Um, so the question is, um, it's the Dial of Destiny. Is there going to be like a flashback to Indiana Jones in the past? And maybe these Nazis use the dial and they, they show up in the future to current Indy. Oh. Or will Indy end up being sent back to the past to fight the younger versions of the Nazis? I, that, that's the question. Okay, I like, I like where your head's at. A double yep. Indy feature. He's going to go back in time, back to the future style, and interact with his old self. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe because this is Hollywood and they're pretty hacky, He's going to go back to iconic moments in the previous Indiana Jones films. I I don't think we I don't think we need that. I, I think really that's exactly think... what's going to happen. I really. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. I, that's, that sounds so bad. Yeah, I don't, that yeah, sounds I, so. <laughs> these are things I want to happen. These are things I think are going to happen. You know, it was kind of okay. And Last Crusade, where he saw the drawing of the Ark of the Covenant, and he went, that's the Ark of the Covenant. And the girl went, are you sure? He's like, pretty sure. But then in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, it was in Area 51, and they had to show the physical art of the Ark of the Covenant again. It's like, no, we get it. We remember that movie. I'm yeah. going to be real annoyed if he, like, starts time traveling. So he's also running away from the rock. Like, I'm going to be really annoyed by that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's gonna they're gonna do the thing they do in some of the star wars movies where they try to like fix a plot hole or something that people didn't like so he's gonna oh, go God. back to indiana jones and the crystal skull and he's gonna put like some extra layer of protection around the fridge that gets nuked and he's just gonna <laughs> just gonna walk off into the sunset and they're like we fixed it that's why he survived the nuking oh this sounds all terrible yeah um so you think it's gonna be terrible i think yeah. all like you know kind of like chip on the shoulder predictions aside, this movie is going to be decent. I think it's going to be better than four. I do agree that it's really weird, especially when we're talking about a, a property kind of like Star Wars, where they're supposed to be pulpy and serial and kind of like these um, young bucks going around doing things. And we have a geriatric old Harrison Ford kind of like limping along it doesn't really seem like a larger than life persona so that part is going to be tough to get over uh i do yeah. think though james mangold has me interested enough spielberg is producing which doesn't really mean a whole lot but no. we'll see if we'll see if harrison ford can at least go out on top with one more big movie maybe i just uh one last thing because people um were mad at me when i criticized the visual effects in the trailer, like the CGI head on Harrison Ford when he's on the horse and the head isn't perfectly matched to the actor. Yeah. Uh, was floating on his shoulders. And someone said, it comes out months from now. They'll fix the CGI by then. And then I have to remind the people, well, this is a Disney product. Did you not see Thor Love and Thunder Oof. or anything else they've put out? They clearly aren't concerned with fixing digital effects or making them look good. They just want to get the thing out because they know you're going to see it. Jane? So I think remember that huh? Jane. Yeah. Oh, oh my the god. The mask just so, like yeah. floating there. Yeah. So the studio who can't even put a helmet on an actor because they yeah. can't decide ahead of time what the helmet should look like. I uh, I don't trust them. Uh, you know the Star Wars movies actually had some decent CGI as bad as they were. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the new but Star I'm Wars. I think the Last Jedi, for as much as I hate that film, is the best looking Star Wars movie to date. Full stop. Mm, well, you're woke. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> yeah, so I I feel like the visual effects are going to be awful, and hopefully the story's interesting. I don't trust. I it sounds weird saying I don't trust the lead actor when it is Harrison Ford. I just don't trust him at this age to pull it off. And on that sad, bitter, miserable note, we end this video. Like we end all videos, by suggesting you subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies, where I post tons of movie content each and every week. You can head on over and even, I guess, check out this guy over here, Tony. Yes, check me out over on Hack the Movies. Uh, I have a podcast every Monday, and I do smaller bonus episodes. Uh, occasionally, I do live episodes. Adam was in my last one, and I've been uploading uh, clips of that on my Clips channel. And uh, yeah, I have a Patreon and whatnot. Come on over, check us out. Let me know what you think. Thanks, Tony. We're going to be doing this all week, so stick around. Take care.